Okay class, we're going to start again today with another video tutorial. Uh, this time we're going to do uh, the ACC problem number 14, the carburetor gasket. I'm going to take this time to walk you through the process. Um, I'll also do this during class, um, but if you do fall behind, here's your opportunity to use this video to your advantage. You can play it, slow it down, rewind it, use it as many times as you need. So let's get started. We are going to start today on a new border. This time we're going to use what's called a GHN, GHSA half inch. So I'm going to do my file new, go to the GHSA half inch, which is the first one or the last one in the first row. I'm going to go ahead and click that on and say OK. Wait for it to come up. Now remember, when it comes up, SOLIDWORKS is thinking we're putting a drawing together from a part we created. And we have not created any parts for this draw or this drawing we're going to do today. So we're going to have to hit the red X to cancel that out. So that's over here to the left. I'm going to hit the red X and call it good. Hit my F key to center up the drawing. Now if you look at uh, the, your uh, problem number 14, the carburetor gas, what you're going to notice here really is just a bunch of circles and curves. So we're going to use our circle tool quite a bit today. Okay, and this is going to be kind of unique because really I can draw this entire thing with nothing but circles and trim it to get it to look the way it needs to look. And then we're going to actually introduce a new uh, sketch tool today called Fillet. So let's go ahead and get our circle tool turned on at the top here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically start with the two, actually I'm going to draw all six circles on at one time. So I'm looking approximately in the middle of the paper. I'm going to start here on my left and draw a small circle. Go a little bit further to the right of that circle, make a bigger circle. Again, go a little more to the right, bigger circle. Finish off all the way over here with a small circle. And I'm going to do one kind of centered up between these two at the top and one more at the bottom. Now, at this point, I'm going to turn the tool off. I'm going to start going ahead and diminishing everything. But what I want to do is I'm going to actually anchor one of these circles down. So the first thing I want to do is actually dimension the first circle. In this case, I'm going to dimension this big one here. Kind of get the size right. That's a little too big. I need this circle to be 2.75. That's the right size right there. So I'm going to turn off my smart dimension now. I'm going to kind of move this over here a little bit more to the left. So it's kind of off center just a little bit. I'm going to use my relationships to make these two circles exactly the same size. I'm going to do that by holding my control key. Clicking on the right circle, clicking on the left circle, and make sure, oops, I got sheet number one, I got delete, and make sure that these two circles are equal to each other. Now I'll go ahead and turn my smart dimension on again, and I'm actually going to hit the center of these two smaller circles, and I'm going to pull down here a little ways, actually towards the bottom, and make that 3.375 inches apart. All right, now from here, I'm gonna go ahead and go from this circle here to this circle here and pull straight up. And that's gonna be a 1.6875. That's one half of 3.750, okay? So 1.6875, enter. Okay, then from this circle here to this circle here, we're gonna pull straight up and make that 3.75. Okay, and then we're going to go ahead from this top circle to the bottom circle, pull to your left, left click, type in 3.5. Okay, now that obviously didn't work too well, so what I'm going to do is stop my tool for right now in dimensioning, grab this small circle here, I'm going to pull mine back down so it kind of sits right in between the two big circles. Turn my smart dimension back on. I'm going to go ahead at this point and dimension from this. Oops, uh, no, 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 not this circle, sorry. I'm going to dimension from the far left circle here to the far right circle way over here. Pull this down. We're going to make that 7.5. Okay, so, so far, basically kind of laying everything out. Now, what I want to do is I'm going to add some relationships to make sure circles are lined up. So, I'm going to go ahead and take this left circle here, hit my control key to the circle to the right. And make these two centers horizontal to each other. Check mark. Control key, this left large circle, 
this right large circle, and I'm going to make those two horizontal to each other. I'm going to take this right large circle, control key, and this right small circle and make them horizontal. And I'm going to finish by taking the small circle at the bottom, control key, small circle at the top, and make them vertical. Now, I'm going to go ahead and dimension this small circle up here, and that that circle is supposed to be 0 0.750, enter. Now, again, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off my dimensioning tool and hold my control key. And I'm going to click on all four of these small circles. And over here to my left, I'm going to make all four of them equal to each other. Okay, so here's my starting point. Now, at this point, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to draw some secondary circles. What I mean is I'm going to draw circles just slightly bigger than the ones we just drew to kind of get the outside edge of the carburetor gasket to show. So turning on my circle tool again, I'll kind of blow up so you can see this. I'm going to hover so I can find the center of each circle and draw a slightly larger circle. Again, it doesn't really matter how big they are because we're going to get them all sized up with our dimensioning tool. I'm going to start like this. Okay. Now, from here, I'm going to start adding some dimensions. Okay, I'm going to have to move some things around. I'll have to end up deleting. Like, for instance, you'll notice here, we got to change this dimension here. This is 1.688. It's supposed to be 1.6875. You can actually physically change your dimensions on screen. All you have to do is click on it so it turns light blue, and then come over here to the left where it says 0.123 document. That is called tolerance and precision. This is the precision box. If you drop this down, you can actually change your decimal sizes all the way up to eight and more. Okay, so I'm going to go here to four, and now you'll notice the number has changed. I'm also going to hit the arrowheads to go inside by hitting these little dots. Okay, so little small things we got to do as we go along. Now, I'm going to dimension this out here. And what it says is this is a radius of 1. Okay, well, 1, or, or, or the diameter is what we're actually measuring here. And diameter is 2 times the radius. So if the radius is 1 times 2, this is a 2-inch diameter. Okay, this one right here, it says radius of 2. Well, 2 times 2 then is 4. And then this one here at the top, it says it's 1.25 radius. Well, 1.125 times 2. You can actually type equations into your modify bar for your dimensioning tool by going here 1.125 star 2 and hitting enter. It will actually give you the answer. Now, at this point, I'm going to do is I'm going to take and hold my control key. Turn, I actually turn off my smart dimension take my control key hold it down I'm gonna click these two circles top and bottom just these two and make them equal I'm gonna take this right side small circle and this left side small circle and make them equal I'm gonna take this right side of this large circle control key left side left side large circle control key and make it equal so now if we start looking at this, we can kind of see the shape of this carburetor gasket taking shape. So I'm going to go to my trim entities, and I'm going to use a trim to closest tool. Okay, and I'm going to start trimming off what I don't need. So for instance, if I blow up over here and I'm looking at the left side of this part drawing, I realize I don't need that line, I don't need this line, I don't need that line. Okay, I don't need this one here, here, or here. So now you can kind of see how the left side starts to shape out. Going up and around this, I know I don't need, for instance, that line here or here. I also don't need these two lines. So now you can see that. I need to do the same thing down here below. Okay, so be really diligent looking carefully at what you have to trim to make this work. So I'm taking my time, really looking at the drawing. To make sure I've got exactly what I need. 
sliding over, same thing over here. I don't need this line, this line, or this line, this line, this line, or this line. So there's your general shape. So I hit my check mark here. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is quickly adjust a few things. I'm going to pull this number in a little bit tighter. Grab and left click and pull this a little bit tighter. Left click and pull. Oops, I got one more to add in here. I forgot. Sorry. From here to here, pull to your left. This distance should be 1.75. Okay, hopefully that didn't mess everything up. I don't think it did, but it looks like it did. So, um, it looks like I lost one of my dimensions here. This one here should have been two. I don't know why that got cut off, and I need to make these two equal again. That's not good. Control key here and here must be equal. Okay. Now, kind of fixed up here. I'm just going to adjust again a couple more dimensions. Um, I need a 3.75 to be a little bit tighter. That looks good right there. Okay, so it gives me at least a look here of what I want. Now, you'll notice some of these are supposed to be, for instance, radius. So like this one here is supposed to be 1.125. So how do I change these numbers around? Well, as you see the number sitting here right now with diameter, if you right-click right on top of it, and go down to the word display options, you can see where you can say display as radius. If you left click that, it will now display as a radius. Okay, and we're going to have to add a bunch of notes here too. So this should be radius at 2, and it is. Um, 2.75, that works there. Um, I should pull this down a little bit more, pull that up a little higher, bring this in. This one here is supposed to be a radius of 1. So again, I hover over the top of it right click i go display options and display as radius okay so i think i've got all the numbers i need so far okay now from here you're going to notice that these corners here are supposed to be rounded off okay so we're going to introduce a new tool today and that tool is called sketch fillet if you look at that it is in the far right corner of the sketch toolbar right underneath the ellipse tool and right next to the polygon tool. Now what this does is it rounds off corners. Filleting means rounding, chamfer means an angled cut. Okay, in this case we're rounding the corners, so we're going to use the fillet tool. Now when I click on a tool, the first thing I need to be pay, paying attention to is how big I want the fillets. So now if you're looking at the drawing, okay, and this is really important to look at, I see my fillets are not all the same size. I see four fillets at 0.5, and I see four fillets at 1.125. So I'm going to do first is put 0.5 in here. And then I'm going to take in here and click inside this box, and then go pick where those 0.5s are. So I'm going to start down here, click on that corner. Now it says, oh, a segment cannot be done. And what you can do to get this. Oops, it went to point 0.1, point 0.5. If you click on that point, it will actually now round off. Say yes, anytime that pops up. Okay, so I'm making it nice and big now. There's those two rounded there. And so what this is showing you is that the computer is essentially going to cut that piece and this piece off and then round it off automatically. Okay, it's going to cut this piece off and that piece off and then round this automatically. Okay. So I'm going to go here and click on this and say yes, and then one more time here, and yes. Now, as soon as I've got the four corners picked, and I see the yellow indication that the fillets are working, I'm going to hit my green check mark. Okay, now I see this dimension over here, and it isn't where I want it, according to the drawings. I'm going to highlight this and delete, turn on my smart dimension, and come over here to this corner. Okay, now if you keep it close, it does this kind of inside outside stuff. If I pull far enough away, perfect, that's where I want it. And then if I want to go ahead and get the arrowhead the correct direction pointing inward, I hit the little dot at the back of the arrow. And there you go. Now go back to your fillet tool, turn it on again. Now I have four fillets in these corners here, top and the bottom, that are supposed to be 1.125. 
So in here, I'm going to put 1.125, enter. And now, same thing, I'm going to click on these corners and say yes. Corner, yes. This corner, and yes. And again, this corner, and yes. And again, what the computer is doing or going to do when I hit the check mark, it's going to cut these pieces off here, here and here. And it's going to blend these two in. Cut off here and here, blend in. Here and here, and blend in. Okay, so if I hit my check mark now, there you go. So the actual part is now done. However, we got some things to fix. For instance, this belongs up top. So I'm going to do is hit my check mark, highlight that dimension, delete, and turn on a smart dimension tool. Click on this arc and pull up a bit. Like so check mark and hit the arrowhead to flip it around. Okay, so now here comes the game of adjust everything. We're going to pull things down, make things look right. Um, hold on, what the heck happened? Um, hold on. Um, in this case, I'm going to have to change this one. If yours is looking like mine, I'm going to need to go to leaders. Okay, I'm going to do one here called... Uh, extension line to opposite side. No, that's not what I'm looking for. Um, I'm going to use uh, foreshorten. What am I looking for? Other? No. Leaders? No, I don't want that. I want radius. Oh, custom text position. No. Well, I'm not finding it. Where do I need to put this? All right. Well, I guess there's nothing I really can do there. I guess I can flip that in. There we go. I guess I just got to pull it till it's right. Sorry. It's going to have to keep kind of messing with it. Okay. Now what I got to do is kind of do some fine tune adjusting here. So you're going to notice a lot of these have like notes to it. So for instance, this one's supposed to have a TYP at the end. So if I left click on this and go over to the white box to my left, put the cursor at the back, with my caps lock on, because I will mark you wrong if you have it lowercase, we are going to type in TYP. Oops, I need to put a space there, sorry. Okay, and hit my check mark. So now I've got that one done. The 0.75. Okay, I'm going to take this one up. And right here, I'm going to take and put my cursor behind the DIM. Space. For the number four, H O L E S for holes. I hit my check mark. Okay, this one here. Just kind of messing with it for a second. Sorry, I'm going to try to take these two a little bit higher and higher. Okay, pull it down there. Okay, I'm going to highlight this one and type in a T Y P. Two point seven five. Left click on it. Pull that right there. And then in this white box over here to the left, we'll drop our cursor in there. Space two holes. Just as you need to. That's good. R two point zero zero zero. Left click on it. We're here to the left. Put your cursor in and type in TYP. R1.00. Left click in there. Cursor TYP. Okay. And at that point, all we have left to do is add in what are called center marks. Now remember, we talked about this when we did our hand drawings. We said that anytime we put a circle, there has to be a plus sign in the middle of each circle. That is called a center mark. It helps the person machining this or building this know exactly in the X and Y where the center of the circle is located. Now we have a tool that allows us to do this. So if you go up next to your sketch toolbar right up at the top of the screen and go to the word annotation and left click, you're going to notice towards the right a thing that looks like a bullseye or a cross. That is your center mark tool. To make this work, all you have to do is left click on the tool 
and then you just gotta click on each circle. So when I left click, you'll see a plus sign drop in there. There's the plus sign. Do one on each of the big circles and small circles. And what you'll notice is the center lines automatically come in. Okay, hit your check mark. Now you'll notice on the other one, we have a line coming right down in between these two. Honestly, we don't need it, but we'll go ahead and add that in. And I can do that by simply going up here to my sketch toolbar, dropping my line tool down the center line, and clicking from the center of one circle to the center of the other, hitting escape. At this point, this drawing is officially done. We just have to make sure that we have our title block correct and that we have a title below this. So the next thing I'm gonna do is under my annotation toolbar again, we are gonna work on the word or on the tool called the note tool. So I'm gonna left click the note tool and I'm gonna take that tool and you see it's a text box. I'm gonna drop that below the 7.5 and left click. Now I get a drop down window and hopefully you can see this. I know the computer is a little finicky when it comes to pop up windows, so you may not be seeing this. So listen to these directions carefully. When your text box comes up, you'll see the formatting toolbar. First thing you need to do is change the font size to 12. Change the font type to bold, underline, but keep it at Arial. I want it centered. And then in that box, you're going to type the following. Caps lock on, SWX, that's short for SOLIDWORKS. Problem number 14, space dash space, carburetor, and type gasket. As soon as you're done, hit your green check mark to the left. Now. Last but not least, let's finish our title block. So where it says solvers part, we are going to double click. When it goes black, we'll type in carburetor gasket. Okay, now here's the problem. Oh, Mr. Combs, this thing came down. This isn't right. So if you double click it, now this is a little tricky, and I'm just going to explain this. If you go to the center box right here, this red center box here, and left click and pull to your right, it will stretch. It's odd, but it works. Stretch it out and then left click it, whoops, click outside of it, and then adjust your title however you need to to make sure it fits centered in that title box. Scale remain one to two. Okay, put your period in here. Okay, in this case, I'll go 2A since it's my first class. Okay, put that right here. Today's date will be 924. 19. GHS student will be your first name or first initial, excuse me, and your last name. Okay, and again, you can adjust these things around by left clicking and dragging. At this point, problem number 14 is done. So the one thing I've not done yet that I should have done a long time ago was go do a file save as and put this, make sure it's in my H drive, okay, under your CAD folder. In your flat layout files. I'm gonna name this ACC14. I'm gonna do underscore my last name, underscore your period. Let's see, save. So all you have to do at this point is go ahead and do a file print. So you go file and print, or I can just hit the print button at the top. Okay, when you get it to here, all I want you to do is just basically make sure you check the properties. Oops, not the properties, excuse me, the page setup. Make sure it's on, uh, in this case, 100% scale, letter draw, letter size paper, automatic, and landscape. That is perfect. Landscape is important. If we do portrait, it will not print for, thoroughly. Okay, landscape is when it lays on its side. Okay, if you want to check the preview, you can. I usually at this point just say OK, preview, and print. OK, hit OK. Go ahead and hit save one more time, and you are now completed of problem 14. OK, so again, all we emphasized today was our circle tool. OK, we used our circle tools and dimensions. We used some relationships to line them up. 
we did our trim tool again. And then once we were done with that trim, the new tool we added in today was called the Sketch Fillet Tool. The Fillet Tool just simply rounds off corners for us. Okay. We also reemphasize adding text to our dimensions, bringing in a title, and again adjusting our title block. With that said, this is complete. Use this video to your advantage. If you need to slow it down, pause, rewind, please do. Otherwise, I'm going to go on to number 15. Good luck. Take care.